All right, this next section we're going to look at some examples with kinetic friction. And um, all these examples are going to be with objects moving at a constant velocity. So that's important because we know if it's going at a constant velocity, then it's in dynamic equilibrium, which means all of the forces have to be balanced, just like they were um, if an object is at rest. So for our first example, we're going to find uh, what is the pulling force needed to maintain a constant velocity if we have an object that um, has a mass of 10 kilograms and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.14. So here, let's say this is a sled and we're pulling across the sled across some snow. So that's why this coefficient is so low, because that would be a fairly slippery surface um, and not much friction. So we want to know what is the force of the pull we need. So what other forces are acting here? Well, of course we have the force of gravity and we have the normal force. And then since this is at a constant velocity, we know that the forces have to be balanced. So we have our force of friction kinetic this time. And that would be equal to the force of the pull. So if we need to find the force of the pull, that would just be equal to the force of friction kinetic. And using our equation, we know the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. So this is already given. All we need to do is find the normal force. So we know that the normal force is equal to the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is equal to m times g. Now we could go ahead and plug in m and uh, plug in g and solve for that and put that number in here. Or since we know that fg is equal to fn, then we know that this quantity m times g is also equal to fn. So what we're going to do is just replace this in here and we're going to do all our calculations at once. Now it doesn't really matter if you do it first and plug in the number or if you plug in um, the symbols, but sometimes it does matter. So sometimes we might have another quantity over here um, that has mass in it and that would allow us to cancel out the mass. Um, so that's going to be an important skill in the future. So now we have mu k times the normal force which is equal to the force of gravity which is equal to m times g. Um, and notice I put this equal to the pulling force because that's what we're really trying to find and that's equal to FFK. So now we have our pulling force would be the 0 0.14, whoops, 1, 4, times the mass which is 10 kilograms times G which is 9.8 meters per second squared. So we have 0.14 times 10 times 9.8. That gives us, oops, okay, typed that in wrong. That gives us 13.72. So notice this works out to be newtons because we have kilograms times meters per second squared and that's equal to a newton. And there was no units here for mu, so that doesn't factor into our units. So that's it. Let's look at another example now. Um, suppose we have an object that's being pulled at a constant velocity. Okay, this time we have a book and we're pushing it across the desk at a constant velocity. We want to know what is the coefficient of friction between the book and the desk. Okay, so let's say the mass of the book is, uh, I don't know, 5 kilograms. Okay, so if this is going at a constant velocity, that's our key word. So when you're reading a problem, and you see constant velocity, that's important. Circle that, put a box around that. That's important because that tells us that all the forces have to be balanced. So the force of our push has to be equal to the force of kinetic friction. And the force of gravity would be equal to the normal force. And if there were additional forces left or right, then the total of all the forces pushing left would have to equal the total of the forces pushing right. And same for up and down. Oh, right, 
left. <laughs> okay. Um, so we want to find what is mu k. So let's say this time we know the pulling force is given and this pulling force is going to be about uh, 6 newtons. Okay. So we need to figure out mu k. Well, we only have one equation that we have that has mu k in it and it's this one. Force of kinetic friction equals mu k times the normal force. So we're going to need to use this equation to find mu k. So in order to solve that, we need to know the force of kinetic friction and the normal force. Well, that's easy to know this because uh, since we're at a constant velocity, that has to be equal to the pulling force. So that would be 6 newtons. So we've got that. And then our normal force is equal to fg. And we know fg is equal to mass times gravity. So that means Fn also equals mass times gra acceleration due to gravity because these are the same. So we can plug in mg in place of the normal force. So now we have 6 newtons equals mu k times 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, so if we solve for mu k, we get about 0 0.12. And remember, that's going to be unitless because this becomes newtons, kilograms times meters per second squared, and we're taking newtons and dividing by this quantity together, which will be newtons. So the units cancel out. So this means that whatever surface the book is sliding across, is um, there's a fairly low amount of friction because this is a very this is a low mu k. So mu k is going to be between 0 and 1. This is closer to 0. That means that these are more slippery surface, less rough. All right, there's our constant velocity examples. Next, we'll look at some examples where we're accelerating.